This lesson is going to be about using the skills we learned last week to um, draw things in, in life in perspective. We use those skills. So what I want you to do is find something to draw. Now, me, I'm drawing my daughter's playhouse out in the back. But you could draw a regular house, you could draw a tree house, you could draw a dumpster. Anything you got that's roughly geometrically square. Now here, I'm using my pencil to measure the bottom half of the house and compare it to the top half of the house. It's a great tool that artists use to uh, measure things that are in the distance, figure out how to put them on their drawing. Um, now I didn't do it quite correct. You can see in a minute here, I erase like half of my roof and go to fix it because uh, drawing sideways is hard. And then when I go back in to fix it, I, I get a little bit more in front of the camera. And I'm sorry you can't see as well, but honestly, uh, Drawing from life is not uh, my greatest skill set, but uh, you know, it's something that's important to practice, and this is evident that I need to practice it more. And, <laughs> anyways, so when you're doing this, you want to draw the face side of whatever you're doing, just like when we were drawing in one point perspective in our notebooks. And then you're going to uh, find where the vanishing point is. I'll do that in a second. But this is the front of it, this would be like the square section if I was doing a cube. And then I'm going to draw all the little non-perspective things that are in the front. Um, so like my pile of rocks, and piece of cardboard that's out there. And then I'm going to try and find out where the vanish point is. So I'm going to line my ruler and my straight edge up with all the lines on one side that I'm going to draw in perspective. And then I'm going to estimate where that, that point would be. Now, it's a little bit of guesswork. You gotta try some lines out and see if you find the right one. You'll see I scoop my vanishing point a couple times in these couple of lines until I figure out where it's gonna be. And then from the big lines that I can see, obviously, I can use it to make the trickier lines like the top of the roof or the trim on the windows and things like that. So the, what the point and the perspective drawing tools aren't really gonna help uh, initially with your big design choices for your drawing kind of have to use those big choices to figure out where the point is so that you can use it to draw the little stuff. Yeah. Um, anyways, so once you get that done, then you're going to try and use the rest of those tools. Now, don't panic too much about uh, one point perspective unless you try the two point in a few minutes and uh, it gets really frustrating, then go back to it and keep, uh, keep working with it. And you can see, once I've got my basic shape strapped out, then I need to go back in and figure out all the little posts, the beams, and the window holes, and that kind of stuff. It gets a little tricky. And remember, anything that's going straight up and down, needs to go straight up and down. Anything that's going back into distance, if it's attached to that building and it's plumb square to the rest of the building, it needs to line up the vanishing point. There are these arches in the front. They obviously don't go either side to side, up and down, or to the vanishing point because they're curved. Now I want you to try and do as much detail and strong as you can. And remember that perspective rules are only going to work for, for most of your big shapes and your square details that um, you know line up with everything else. What it's not going to work for is things like the flag that's flapping around in the breeze there, or the curved lines, or any of these details in the front. You just kind of figure out how to draw those observationally, and if they're not like perfectly accurate, that's fine. You just do your best with it. Now, um, addressing the elephant in the room, yes, I'm using a comb as a straight edge, because I thought it would be nice for me to be able to clearly point out uh, things in the drawing with something smaller than a giant ruler. So um, the benefits of the comb are that I can fit it in my pocket for when I'm walking around and drawing in life, and I can uh, use the back of it because it's straight and it, it's long enough to go you know, more than halfway across my paper. It also makes uh, has a pointy end for pointing at things. Now I could have used a piece of cardboard or a ruler or the back side of the cover of the notebook that I was using, but um, I think the comb works nice. Plus it helps me keep my hair in place. Now, for the rest of this, uh, I kind of go in and add some details to the drawing, and I shade it in a little bit. Um, and I just want to reiterate that the perspective part of this is uh, it's not the most important part. It's to look at what you're drawing and try and draw what you actually see instead of what you know is there. Now, I make a bit of a mistake with this, and I end up putting a little bit of white trim on the left side of this when I shade it in. 
that's not really there. And uh, if you can catch it, good on you. If not, I'm gonna pretend like I don't make any mistakes. Now, before I go on and talk about the two-point perspective, I want to just take a second and say what I want you guys to do is go out and draw something in the real world uh, in the most realistic way you can. You to spend you know half an hour 45 minutes on it i don't want you to spend the rest of your forever there now if um, it's rainy or gross like it is right now and you can't get outside then you can do this inside just find something set it up a fair distance away from you in a room and then try and figure out where its vanishing points would be and do your best to draw it that way okay now this is my setup that i'm using to uh board this but i might be interested all right now we're going to draw a two point perspective point perspective is is when you have a single line that goes straight up and down and then you work work at it with a vanishing point on uh, both the right and the left sides of it. Now you need to draw from the corner of the building. Right? That's gonna be my shape. The size that any line that goes from that center line to the right is gonna go to that vanishing point. And any line that's gonna go from the center line to the left going to go to the other vanishing point. Now the reason you would do this is anytime you're looking at a building from a corner, because part of the building is going to go away from you in one direction, the other part is going to go away in the other direction. Now, you have to do the same thing to find out what your vanishing point is. Now this line that I just drew right there, that's not a, a real line, because that's the line that would connect both top corners of my uh, of the roof. So it's just like a placeholder line, I'll erase it in a little while. But it's going to help me figure out how tall that post needs to be and as it bumps into where the roof starts. So uh, it, they overlap a little bit. Now the arch, unless I didn't get any references for that because it's again a curved line so it doesn't follow the general perspective rules. Uh, you just kind of have to put it in the best that it looks like it is. going to work for things that are, are uh, square, where I say square, but I mean they have like right angles at all the edges and everything lines up nicely. The things that you put in your drawings that don't follow those those rules, they're obviously going to break the perspective rules. They, they are rounds, so they don't have nice straight corners, but what you can do is draw a square box around them and then add your curves in afterwards. And the square box that you put is going to define non-square thing is on the inside. We'll talk about that more next week. But for right now, just try and pick things to draw that are square. And if you come into things that are not um, square, just do your best to try and interpret how they're going to be. Uh, because that will allow you to make your dark shapes and then your light shapes and 
kind of quickly defines them. And you don't have to worry about things like mixing or making things the colors that they really are, or you know, matching things, or putting in colors that aren't necessarily you know, correct. You can just add some shading to it, make it a value drawing. I call it a day there. And if you can't even get that far, and you just end up making the drawings of the lines that describe it, that's a fine place to stop too. If you're running out of time and you feel like you need to get done with it to move on and do you know, other things you need to do. And if you want to go back to it later, shade it in. It's awesome. Right. Good luck. Don't panic. You got this.